Well, I did a little survey on my YouTube channel asking viewers what kind of videos they'd like to see. And over 90% of you said you wanted to see more technical or educational videos about flying. So be careful what you ask for. Here's a 20 minute video about descent planning. Hopefully it's not the most boring thing you've ever seen in the world. I thought I'd do a little uh, video about descent planning. And this is nothing new for most of you, but I figure there might be some, some of you out there that have uh, stepped up to a Sling TSI from a normally aspirated uh, airplane. And since the Sling TSI is turbo, you'll find yourself flying higher than you did on a normally aspirated airplane because you get better true airspeed as you go higher. And a lot of times you can catch nice tailwinds. So when you're flying up a flight level 180, for example, descent planning becomes a little more important than when you're down at the single digit altitudes. So I thought a review might be helpful. There's a number of different ways to determine descent planning. And I'll go over some of the more common ones that you've probably heard of. And then I'll tell you why some of those more common ways may not be the best way for descent planning in the Sling TSI. And I'll tell you the method that I use, and then we'll talk about VNAV. So nobody likes to do math in public. So as pilots, our, our minds are kind of busy when we're flying the airplane, so we don't want complex formulas. We want simple, simple math. So we use rules of thumb, which are not exact, but they're close enough and they're easy to do in your head. Those of you who have done instrument training, you know that we do most of our precision approaches at a three degree glide path. And in a three degree glide path, equates to about 300 feet per nautical mile. So if you're on a long final and you're 10 miles out from the runway, you should be at 3,000 feet AGL at 10 miles out to be on a three mile glide path. And then at five miles, you should be at 1,500 feet AGL, etc. Of course, we're usually solving for the other way. We know our altitude and we want to know when we should start down. So let's say we're cruising at flight level 180. When do we need to start down? Well, first we need to subtract the field elevation of our destination. So let's say it's 2,000 feet. So we have six, from uh, flight level 180 to 2,000, we have 16,000 feet to lose. So how far out from the airport should we start down? Well, we could use our 300 feet per nautical mile rule of thumb. So quick, what's 16,000 divided by 300? That's not the easiest the math to do when you're kind of busy doing other stuff. I mean, you could make it a little easier by say, oh, okay, well, 15,000 divided by 300, that's, that's 50 and then just add it back up to 16,000. But uh, there's an easier way to do it, and that's just three to one. So three to one, you multiply the, the thousands of feet that you have to lose by three, and that's the distance that you need to start your descent. So we need to lose 16,000 feet. 16 by three is 48. So we would start down 48 miles from our destination. A couple of fighter jets, man, they are booking 514 knots. T-38s. All right, so you'll notice uh, if you do the math, the 16,000 divided by 300 feet per nautical mile, you come up with about 53 miles. And if you do the 3 to 1, 16 by 3 is 48, so they're a little bit different. But remember, both of those are rules of thumb. Neither one of them are actually accurate, uh, but they're close enough for descent planning purposes. The, the 300 feet per nautical mile itself is a rounded off number. The, the real number is closer to 320 feet per nautical mile. So if you divided your 16,000 by 320, you get about 50, and that's closer to the 3 to 1 number. But the point is the 3 to 1 is close enough, and it's a lot easier to, to do in your head. The nice thing about 3 to 1 is it works both ways. You can multiply your altitude by 3 to determine the distance to start down, or you can multiply your distance by three to figure out the altitude that you should be at for a three degree glide path. It's not exact, but it's close enough for a ballpark estimate. So the next question is, what descent rate is required to maintain that three degree descent path? Well, we've got an easy rule of thumb for that. So you take your ground speed, cut it in half, and add a zero. Those of you, again, who uh, have done instrument training, you've probably done this. Uh, if you're doing your ILS or an LPV approach and you're trying to figure out your target airspeed, if you're doing 90 knots over the ground, cut it in half, 45, add a zero, 450 feet per minute is your descent rate. All right, let me check my oxygen altimeter. When I'm up here at altitude, I, I have a, a timer set on my GNX 375 to remind me to check my 
oxygen levels every 20 minutes. And also, if I'm not t talking to ATC to remind me to set my uh, altimeter to whatever the closest altimeter setting is. All right, oxygen level's good. All right, where were we? Yeah, so the three to one works even in transport category jets. The old Lear jets and DC-9s and 727s and 737s I flew back in the Stone Age didn't have VNAV or managed nav or managed descent as we call it in the Airbus. So we had to plan our own descents and we used three to one. So a lot of times ATC would say, hey, cross this point at 12,000 feet and 250 knots and we'll be at 37,000 feet. So we got to lose 25,000 times three, so 75 miles. And then we would add one nautical mile for every 10 knots of speed we'd have to lose. So if we're descending at 320 knots and they want us to hit that point at 250 knots, that's 70 knots, so that's seven miles to slow down. So you add the 7 to the 75, and we'd start down at 82 miles out from that point. And then what descent rate did we use? Same as we just talked about. Your ground speed divided in half and added zero. So if you're doing 540 knots over the ground, your descent rate is 2,700 feet per minute. Simple, right? Yes, it is simple, but there's a problem that makes it not ideal for this Link TSI. So the 3 to 1 works in any pressurized airplane, and it works well in slow, unpressurized airplanes. The problem is when you get into a faster unpressurized airplane, is the rate of descent required for a 3 degree glide path gets to be too high of a rate of descent and it's uncomfortable for your ears. So if you're down in a Cherokee and you're doing 100 knots over the ground, you take your half 100 knots and add a zero, you got 500 feet per minute for your 3 to 1 descent. That's fine. But now you're up in the Sling TSI and you're doing 155 true like we're doing right now. And let's say you have a 25 knot tailwind and now you're doing 180 knots over the ground. So you take your half 180 as 90 and add a zero. 900 feet per minute is what would be required to maintain a 3 degree descent path. And that's a little uncomfortable on your ears. So now that we went through the whole thing about 3 to 1 or 300 feet to nautical mile, you can throw that all out the window because you're not going to use that most of the time in this Link TSI. You'll still use that down in low altitudes when you're doing your instrument approaches and that kind of thing. But for descent from altitude, this Link's a little too fast to get that descent rate. So we need a different method, a different rule of thumb that will limit our vertical speed to a comfortable descent rate. So 500 feet per minute most people think is a comfortable descent rate on your ears. So what rule of thumb can we do that's easy to plan our descent and maintain no more than 500 feet per minute? Well, I've got a good rule of thumb for that. So what you do is you convert your ground speed to nautical miles per minute. So 60 is one mile per minute, 120 is two miles per minute, and 180 is three miles per minute. You take your ground speed in miles per minute and you double it. Why do you double it? Because you're at 500 feet per minute, how long does it take you for you to go 1,000 feet? Two minutes. So our rule of thumb is going to be how much distance you travel in two minutes. So that's why we're taking our miles or ground speed in miles per minute and doubling it. So then we take that ground speed in miles per minute, double it, and multiply it by the number of thousands of feet you have to lose. And then that, that's your distance for your top of descent. So let's do an example. So let's say you're in a slink TSI and you're up in the teens and you're doing about 150 knots. And let's make it simple, there's no winds today. How many nautical miles per minute is 150 knots? Well, it's exactly halfway between 120 and 180. So it's 2.5 nautical miles per minute. So you double the 2.5. So you take your five nautical miles and multiply that by the number of thousands of feet you need to descend. So going back to, let's say, your flight level 180 and your field elevation is 2,000, you got 16,000 feet to lose. Multiply 16 by 5, and you get 80. So 80 nautical miles is your top of descent. Now, multiplying by 5, sometimes that's too much. That's too hard to do when your mind's doing a bunch of other things. So I got to cheat for that. Basically, you just uh, cut your altitude in half and add a zero. So if you're losing 16,000 feet, half of 16 is 8, add a zero, 80 nautical miles. All you're doing is a little math cheat. You're just moving the decimal point one way at the beginning and then moving it back the other way at the end. 
Uh, so the answer is the same. It's just easier to do the math in your head. So that's the that's the method I, mo I do most of the time. If I'm close to 150 knots, I just do half the altitude I need to lose and add a zero, and that's my top of descent. And then if I've got a strong tailwind and I'm doing closer to 180, then you're doing closer to three miles a minute. You double it, and multiply by six. And if you got a strong headwind and you're doing close closer to 120, now you're two two miles a minute. Double that, multiply the altitude you need to lose by four. Most of the time, I actually use VNAV, but I use the math to back it up. And we do that in in the airlines too. Uh, you know, a VNAV is just a simple computer. It's garbage in, garbage out. Uh, if you have made a mistake in programming it, it's not going to give you an accurate answer. So I like to do the math and come up with my own top of descent. And when I'm approaching that number that I calculated, that distance from the uh, destination, if, I, if I'm not getting my vertical path message, then I need to double check my VNAV settings and maybe I got it wrong. So VNAV is great at, at calculating your descent path for you. The thing about it is if you couple the autopilot to VNAV, the VNAV is constantly calculating and recalculating the descent rate required as you go down. And what happens is, as you start your descent, your ground speed will increase, and then the VNAV will calculate, well, I need a higher rate of descent. And so it'll pitch the nose over, and now your ground speed will increase even more. And then the VNAV will say, I need to descend even more. And it'll pitch the nose over, and it can easily, you know, exceed your VNE. It, it sort of overcorrects, I've found. Uh, that, that happens a lot if you're flying into a headwind and the headwind is, gets weaker as you get lower. Then your ground speed is going to increase as you uh, descend. And it also happens, you know, sometimes you can shift from a, a headwind up high to a tailwind down low. And then your ground speed is really going to uh, increase as you descend. Now, I usually just maintain cruise power as I descend. And at 500 feet per minute, it'll be fine on the airspeed. I give myself... 10 knots of buffer below the V&E &E, as long as it's smooth and at 500 feet per minute it will uh, generally stay below that uh, 145 or so. But if I couple it up with the VNAV, like I said, it'll it'll overcorrect and it can it can overspeed you. So I do a couple of things to prevent that from happening. First of all, when I when I set up my VNAV, I want a 500 feet per minute descent rate, but I set it at 450, so I'm undershooting my target descent rate because I know once I start down my speed will increase and the rate of descent required will also increase. And then the other thing I do is I'll use the VNAV to calculate the path and give me a glide path on my PFD, but I don't couple it up. I used to arm it with VNAV and, you know, like I said, it, it will chase that descent rate. So instead, I just use the vertical speed and I use that to match the uh, VNAV calculated glide path. And that does really well, you know, because you can fine-tune it if you get a little high just go another hundred feet per minute down if you get a little low just a hundred feet per minute less and that is able to slowly re reconnect with that glide path rather than you know the, the VNAV just seems to want to dive for it and then you know it, it starts overspeeding the airplane and then you pull the power back and now it slows down and now it says oh you need a lot less rate of descent so uh, it's just a, a lot smoother to use vertical speed in my opinion so a lot of times when you're, if you're doing a straight in approach, you're going to set yourself a point to shoot for at some point X number of miles this side of the airport. If it's IFR, you know you might have an arrival in there and then you have target altitudes on the arrivals. Or you can set an initial approach fix in and set a target altitude at one of those. If it's VFR, I, a lot of times I use the Garmin visual approach in the database and I just load that in there and it sets you a three nautical mile final and I'll set a target altitude at a thousand feet above the field elevation. So here it's a, about 1100 foot of field elevation so I set 2100 at a three nautical mile final and I set my VNAV to descend there and it's telling me I'm going to start down in about three minutes. So first of all I've got a GNX 375. Uh, if you guys got a GTN 650 or 750 my, my uh, 375 doesn't have VNAV, it's got VCALC, so I don't use that. I use the VNAV in the G3X, but if you guys have a GTN, you've got VNAV in there, so you would do it in there. So this will be slightly different for you guys. Vertical track. All right, so you see I got the approaching VNAV profile, and you heard the vertical track. And you see we have a glide path here. 
and when that centers, I'll go to vertical speed, and I'll set about 500 feet per minute. And usually it only takes plus or minus 100 feet per minute to adjust, just to make slight adjustments if need be on the descent. Alright, so I arm my vertical speed. Vertical speed is armed. The glide path is centered. And I'll set my 500 feet per minute. And it'll maintain that glide path all the way down with small adjustments. And I just leave my power in. Free speed. Fine as well. And I got plenty of plenty of space before V&E. And by using the vertical speed, I, I can ensure that you get a nice steady rate of descent and it's not chasing that vertical speed or not chasing that glide path. And in addition to watching the glide path, assuming you've set your target altitude on your altitude selector, the G3X will give you this nice, some people call it the green banana, and that tells you at what point at your current rate of descent you'll reach the altitude set in your target window. So, and you see it's fluctuating slightly and you can see we're, eh, we're maybe a tiny bit high. So I'll just go down one more, 600 feet per minute, and you'll see that, that will move towards me. Now we're back on path, I'll just go back to 500. And we're good. So just those small adjustments is all I need. It's a lot smoother than, than the VNAV. So here's another use for VNAV. Uh, today I'm flying into this uh, olive branch that's under the uh, Bravo shelf of Memphis. So let's say I call Memphis approach and they're too busy and they say just remain sit, remain outside of the Bravo. So now I need to get below this shelf. It's a 4,000 foot shelf. So I made a user waypoint and I set an altitude of 3,500 there. And that'll get me underneath the Bravo. And so he set that up in VNAV. There's my user waypoint. There's my usual uh, rate of descent. I put 3,500 foot MSL. Uh, I just put a half mile before. I made the point already three miles this side of the Bravo, so plenty of space there. And then it gives me my time to top a descent. And then I double check that by doing my math. I got 12.5 where I'm at now. I need to go to 3,500, that's 9,000 feet. Doing 150 knots, that's two and a half miles a minute. Double that, because we're gonna do 500 feet a minute. And so I can do my trick of just taking the altitude that I need to lose, which is 9,000 feet, cut it in half, 4.5, add a zero, so it's back to 45. So when I'm 45 miles from that point, I should be around the top of descent. So I should be hearing a, a vertical track message from my VNAV. So your math is your backup. You know, if you don't get that vertical track message, then you might have set something wrong on your VNAV. Well, as Forrest Gump said, that's all I have to say about that. Hopefully there's a few nuggets in there that might be useful for some of you. And since you guys had to sit through that, I'll at least pay back with a little bit of a scenic landing here. If you know what runway this is, let me know. I might do a video about it in the future. For now, just sit back and enjoy. Also, let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to make videos about.